slow poker. I have a career and a family, but also play poker, which doesn't leave me much time. So let's get to it. I've got nines, and Lojack's weak sauce limp offends my camera so much that she powers down in protest. So I raised to 25, because that's what she would have wanted, but cut off three bets to 105. And then the actions on an older gentleman in the big blind. He looks down at his cards, reluctantly picks up $105 in chips, shuffles them around in his hands for a long time, lets out a dramatic sigh, dripping with melancholy. Then he pauses, reconsiders, and raises to 305. What happens next may shock you, but let's just say it rhymes with cold rolled gold. Who leaves pretzels in the freezer? Kids! After all three of us instamuck, mm. My camera resurrects herself just in time to record the audio of my otherworldly read. Big Blind then shows his cards, revealing the most stunning twist since the series finale of Lost when it was revealed that the writers never really had a plan in the first place. Good for you, Big Blind. Looks like someone's been doing their homework. You need to understand that everything you do at the poker table conveys information. When you're dealt rockets, you can't be all loosey-goosey, having a sandwich, looking confident. Woohoo, baby, I love it! In my Acting with Aces masterclass, you'll develop the skills required to convince everyone you're forbetting light when secretly you're not. Race. I'm all in. I'm all in. I'm all in. <sighs> I've got Ace King raised to 20 and get called by Daryl. On this flop, I bet 20 and Daryl quickly calls. On this turn, Daryl leads for 40 and I quickly call since he 100% does not have a 9. On this obnoxious river, Daryl leads again for 50. <laughs> what do I be? <laughs> uh, uncle. Uncle. I laugh, I fold, I don't conquer. As Daryl shows the queen he obviously had, he and I have a little chat. Nice catch. I assume you know you were behind on the turn, right? Yeah. Well played. Nice hit. I think I bet on the nine to make you think a little bit. Oh, I wasn't, I wasn't afraid of the nine. Oh, you wasn't? <laughs> okay, Daryl, that was your moment, but the next moment is my moment. I've got ace-ten offsuit, and honestly, I don't love this hand, but after two limps, I raised to 25, and the two limpers couldn't call faster, as their garbage cards, out of nowhere, have become five times less trashy. One of these garbage men is my guy Daryl. Okay, Daryl, remember, this time it's not your moment, it's my moment. I played a song and everything. After a good flop for ace-ten and two checks, I bet 35, and they both quickly call. Not much to worry about beyond a flush draw, so after what seems like a safe turn and two checks, I bet 100, and Daryl check raises to 300. I struggle to find a hand that makes a lick of sense here. A set would have check raised flop. All I can fathom is five deuce of diamonds? And while it does seem ridiculous to put Daryl on exactly one hand, I just have this palpable sense that I'm already dead. So you win again, Daryl. And it turns out I was way wrong. He didn't have five deuce of diamonds. He had five deuce offsuit. Daryl then chastises me for betting too small on the flop and that he simply had to call when I bet a paltry 25. And he wouldn't have chased six clean outs if my bet was a more substantial 30 or 35. I almost point out that my flop bet was 35, but then stop myself as I remember that a player who limp calls with five deuce offsuit isn't, you know, playing with a full deck. You know, I take that back. Daryl is playing with a full deck. All right, Daryl, that was two moments for you. But this next one, this next one is my moment. Give me this moment. Chance. I've got jacks, and after a straddle, the same two players limp yet again. So yet again, I raise, this time to 40. And yet again, their hands weren't strong enough for a raise, but boy are they strong now. And yet again, there's Daryl. So I'm facing what we in poker call the triple Daryl. And the flop is momentous. Two checks to me, I bet 75, and then... Some people wait all session for a moment like this. Some people fold for hours for a moment like this. I can't believe it's happening to me. Well, there goes my one shining moment. And as deflated as I feel that Daryl stole the moment that we clearly agreed was mine, there's only one thing to do. Nice hand. But about that, 
Sure, we all know it's widely accepted poker etiquette that irrespective of the outcome, we tap the table and say nice hand. And we all want the Daryls of the world to check shove as a 3-1 to underdog. Over time, that's a good thing. And I'm not suggesting that anyone should be a sore loser or shouldn't be gracious in defeat. What I'm asking is, was it a nice hand? At what point during a poker hand is a poker hand no longer a poker hand and is just vomiting chips? Does Daryl's approach warrant a pat on the back? It's not like he made some above the rim strategic maneuver. It's not like he did something special to deserve this money. All he did was check shove into someone who had no other choice but to snap call with the nuts. An eight-year-old could do that. So I hereby propose that we as a poker community reserve nice hand for hands that are legitimately nice, like a normal sized flop check raise with a draw that eventually gets there, or it doesn't get there but the bluff still works. That kind of hand gets the nice hand. But when someone just check jams flop with ace high, we stop saying nice hand and instead give credit where credit is due. Yeah, Terrible hand. Motion proposed. All in favor? And it looks like we have our first ever video question. This comes from Declan in Leander, Texas. Hey, slow poker. Can you beat an eight year old at poker? No. I've got fives, raised to 15, and actions on the big blind, who is, in a word, chatty. Not sure why he's so confident. If he's just flatting, he can't be too strong. And we haven't even seen a flop. But now we do. And it's a pretty good one for my hand. So when he checks, I bet 15. Okay, I'll take that under consideration. When I turn open-ended and he checks again, I size up to fold out a draw or just some pair. Be careful. Duly noted. After this river and another check, I should triple barrel, given at best he's just got some random seven. But instead, I give up and just hope he missed a draw. Check. Seven. That's why I said be careful. All right, Care Bear. Maybe you didn't notice, but I just got cleaned out by a glorified eight-year-old, and I'm in no mood for 7-6 offsuit. So you keep telling me careful? Well, I've got three words for you. Run and hide. Now I know what kind of trash hands you play, and how you play them. Yes, you did outflop me that time, and yes, the 7-6 offsuits and the 5 deuce offsuits will win every so often, but on a long enough time horizon, my range will annihilate yours. So when we face off again, rest assured, your chips will be my chips. So my advice to you again is this, run and hide. That is all that I ask. I've got kings. Care Bear raises over a limp to 20. I three bet to 75 and he calls. Careful. After this flop, he checks out of turn. I bet 80 and he quickly calls. After this turn, he checks out of turn again. I bet again, this time 150 and he quickly calls again. After this river and the rarely attempted high degree of difficulty triple barrel out of turn check, which should serve as a green light to fire again. It still feels like nearly every hand I was beating has now pulled ahead, and I'm a bit concerned about a next level out of turn check raise. So I check, and he checks for, if my math is right, the 45th time. He's got queens and jacks, two pairs. Got your keys. And I'm sorry. Kings, uh, he's got the uh, Wait, no, 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 I've, I've got. Oh, it's right, no, he's got the uh, highest two pairs. Yeah, yeah, kings and jacks, okay. <laughs> Out of turn checks, overvalued top pair, a misdelivered pot. What is this, amateur hour? I've got a seven of diamonds, raised to 15, and get a call from Care Bear. And the flop should last a good while. Diamonds are forever. He checks, I bet 15, and he calls. This turn is deadly. Curious how everyone who touches those diamonds seems to die. He checks, I bet 25, and he check raises to 60. Let's pause here. Because it's time to settle a long-standing argument with many of my fellow card heads who argue that I should flat here and slow play because if I raise, it's far too face up as the nuts. But here's my rebuttal. I argue raising here is a better idea, not only for protection, since a rivered full house is still in play, but far more importantly, how many river scare cards would kill my action, like another diamond. If he's under the illusion he's ahead now, let's dance now, because this very well could be my last value tunity. And the red chip poker folks concur that a three bet is the move here, as it's tricky to get stacks in by smooth calling, even while in position. So I raise to 190, and Care Bear has a few words. Oh, you do it again? I did it again. You do it again? I did it again. Uh, Indeed. You got blush? There's one way to find out. You bluff. Call the bluff, man. Alright, you win. Alright, I do win. Can I say it's got you got? Nothing anymore. What you have? No, seriously, nothing. The dealer has my cards. I almost fall. Oh, and if you had, the, the look on your face. What happened to you? Slow poker. I've got sixes, raised to 15, and get three callers, including Care Bear. This flop couldn't be worse for my hand, but it does check around. And after this turn, the board really isn't blossoming into much for me, but it checks around again. And while preteen me does have a massive crush on this river, it does concern present day me that one too many of my pop culture references are a bit dusty. But for the uninitiated, Blossom was a TV show in the 90s. Its biggest stars were hats, and the title character's best friend was named Six. And if you're under the age of 35, now you're caught up. For everyone else though, wasn't Six a card? Melissa said the Fresh Prince was staying here. 
fresh print. Really, he's so cute. I love that rap that goes, now this is a story all about how my life got slipped turned upside down. <laughs> That's really not funny. Anyway, back to this river card, which is a six. It leads Care Bear to lead for 50, which leads me to raise to 190, which leads to this. You got me. Yes, I do have you. Man, given our holdings, those really were some action turn and river cards. They almost want to make me yell out some sort of exclamation. Just can't decide which one's most fitting. Whoa. 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 Yeah, it'll come to me. I've got 10 nine of diamonds. Raised to 15, cut off calls, and Care Bear, three bets to 35. For the record, this is not a serious three bet size. No way I'm folding to a near min click. So I call and cut off calls. And after this flop, Care Bear checks. Oh, does he have a good hand, but doesn't like that ace? Will I get a free turn card? Will that turn card give me a shit ton of equity? Yup! Care Bear bets 60. I call, and hey Care Bear, just a word of caution. If you've got a nut allergy, then careful. He checks, and he talks. You don't hit your flush. I did not. After a little bluffy Hollywooding, I bet a bluffy 250, and he folds. Nope. Wow, Care Bear. The two of us, we've been through quite a lot together since you played 7-6 offsuit. Do you remember what I said to you when we first met? Yeah, That's right, careful. You said careful. I forget these things sometimes. So let me tell you something about myself. Three of my great passions are numbers, poetic justice, and Scrabble. And the Scrabble value of the word careful is 12. So what I need is to play one more hand with you and win exactly careful dollars. And then, and only then, am I through. Are you ready? You sure? Careful. I've got Ace King. Limp, raise, fold. Now I'm done. And that'll do it for episode 16 of Slow Poker. Please like, subscribe, comment below, and hit that notification bell. All of that really helps the channel. And remember, when you have aces, you don't have aces. Hey, so I've been using your method, but they all fold every time. I want a refund. No, until next time, this has been Slow Poker. I just want to feel this moment. You know, we sure do have a lot of fun here at Slow Poker, but let's talk seriously. In this episode, there's a scene with frozen pretzels, which is a callback to the frozen peanuts in episode 6. And if you haven't yet seen episode 6, get on the f***ing stick. Now, for those fans of the 1980s television series Punky Brewster, what I'm about to say won't come as a surprise. But for the 42% of you who didn't, please know. Refrigerators are deadly. For both today's episode and episode six, we spent millions on safety precautions and stunt coordination to guarantee the safety of our entire crew. So yeah, we may laugh it up here at Slow Poker, but refrigerators are no joke.